Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we um, apologize for our somewhat um, shambolic organization, but uh, we have a consensus that, um, that probably now is the moment to start. Uh, tiny bit of housekeeping. Um, the, after the lecture is finished, I'm, I'm sure Bonjour will take some questions, but the, the bar upstairs will be open. And for the uh, FBUA, UFBA members, um, the, the dinner will be downstairs below here. Um, and I'm sure that uh, those who are, are coming know they're coming, um, as opposed to not. Uh, anyway, it's my pleasure to um, introduce uh, Benjamin Mouton, who is going to um, give us uh, what I'm sure will be a fascinating talk this evening. So with no more ado, I shall hand over to him. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I tried to give the lecture in, in English, but uh, probably my English is rather, rather tired, so uh, please ex excuse me for the result. So, <coughs> in the early 12th century, a profound change happened in the Western countries by the emergence of a middle class whose economic role was to become dominant and by the transformations in uh, religious practices and by the quest for political balance and equilibrium between the power of the crown and that of the church, this change led to an urban growth and the transformation of the city and the passage from archaic, obscure and massive architecture to light filled soaring buildings as a triumphant illustration of the society's renewal, Gothic architecture. The Gothic architecture is not coming from a particular invention. It is the inspired and genius combination of former architectural forms optimized in a new way. The, ground, the grind vaults are well known since the antiquity, transferring the load to the four corners, removing the walls. The, constrictions, the construction of ribs below the groins are like permanent arches that would help the construction without form works and give a significant saving time. This is a rivet vault that lead to free plants, as uh, you can see on this uh, um, 14th century sketch. The segmental arch placed at the top of independent buttress will balance the thrust of rivet vaults. This is a flying buttresses. The result is an active or dynamic system, more delicate than the passive heavy Norman one, but, but mostly lighter and economical. Free from walls and increasing in height, the inside archi architectural space in, is invaded by myriad of colored light passing through the stained glass windows that are at their peak at, at this time. Cathedral Gothic genius are coming. The new Gothic cathedral, the bishop and the cathedral chapter mandates <coughs> the chief mason to plan and to drive the new cathedral works. All the trades are reorganized at, at a result, as a result, and the architects is coming, separate from the mason, the carpenter, and the stone dresser. <coughs> time after time, he is leaving the anonymous society of builders. He is admitted as a specialist, and his name become to be known. Very shortly, carpenters are collecting wood for scaffolding and carpentry, stone dressers, select stones for walls, vaults, and sculpture. But 
of the city is demolished, such as to give place to the new cathedral foundations. Walls rising up, and thanks to an exceptional constructive efficiency, building the ribs and the vaults, the first cathedral rise in Ile-de-France from 1130, it is 1131 Noyon, it is 1155 Lens, 1160 Sens. There are 25 in, 30, uh, in uh, 1230 and 80 at the end of 13th century. Notre Dame de Paris is at a crossroad cross, cross between primitive pioneering and classical Gothic, Gothic style. The works began from the east in 1133, the Norman Cathedral Saint Etienne remaining free for a time. The choir is achieved in 1177. At that time, the 12th century architecture is still massive. The windows are yet modest, the light timid, the vault are six parted in an archaic form. Whereas, paradoxically, the ingenious arrangement of the vaults of the apes shows a great freedom and brilliant knowledge of the stone dresses. The identical piers are characteristic of the following Gothic time. At the end of 12th century, transept and the new nave is built and nave is achieved in 1220 and the west facade began to rise. Those years are that of the boiling acceleration in Gothic evolution. A general revi revision of the cathedral is done. The six partit vaults are conserved. But the windows are extended downwards to increase light. Outside roofs of the deambulatory are changed for terraces. New flying buttresses replace the old 12th century ones. As you can see, and new carpentry of the nave and the right ameliorates the one of the choir. You can see the father and the daughter. On the western facade, above the three portals, the two massive town towers are adorned by uh, molding festons and crockets, and a game of transparency with colonnade in front of massive wall, gave a, a joke of massive and transparent architecture. Opened by the first gray Gothic window, rose window. This is the so-called harmonious facade that will remain one of the canons of French Gothic architecture. In the early uh, 13th century, Gothic architecture got stabilized in Notre Dame and climbed a new step. The great, the great work is achieved and despite the adaptation, it offers an extraordinary homogeneity, thanks to the abnegation of five anonymous architects, giving a great lesson of architecture that reveals the authority of the architectural work dominating over the men who serve it and their ego. Um, 127 meters long, long, 45 meters wide, 33 meters under the arches. Notre Dame was at the time the largest church in Western countries, but already too small. They began the construction of chapels between the flying buttresses from the nave and following 
in the choir till 1320 and aligning the two pinions of the transept in 1250, the architects are known, Jean de Chelles, Pierre de Montreuil, and followed by number of masters. End of the 13th century, the bells are installed in the western towers, and so is the Grand Bourdon, you can see there. Great, uh, greatness and decline. Notre Dame becomes a legend, appearing in the story of the giant Gargantua and Patagriel, a novel written by Rabelais in 1534. Early 18th century, the choir is refurbished by Robert de Cotte and received in uh, 1723 the Louis, Louis XIII wish which is a monumental sculpture from Coustou at the back of the altar. 1753, the medieval colored stained glasses are demolished. 1756, the old Gothic sacristy is demolished and a new one is built. 1772, the central western door is enlarged <coughs> and the spire demolished in 1787. The Giants. 1831, Victor Hugo published Notre Dame de Paris. It is, he is a romantic novelist and poet with the beginning of a celebrity. The novel is successful. This is shortly the story of the pretty Esmeralda, young and, uh, young and free gypsy woman, and the ugly, disformed Quasimodo, fighting for saving Esmeralda, and the cathedral against crooks. It is, it is clear, it is clear that Esmeralda is the cathedral, which is the real main personage of the book. And the book, is a manifest for architecture and heritage. Many cultured people before him had a deep interest for antiquities, but he probably is the first to understand that the greatness of heritage shows the greatness of the societies and peoples. He said, measuring the big toe, it is measuring the giant. And this is politically very valuable. Thanks to the book and its successful welcome, the invention of historic monuments leads to the organization of the state service. Thanks to the book, Tenders is published in 1843 for the restoration of Notre Dame. Jean-Baptiste de la Suisse and Eugène Viollet-le-Duc won the contract. On the left, Jean-Baptiste de la Suisse is the first architect using the archaeological approach for the medieval building restoration. He was called by Duban, another architect, in 1839 for the saint chapelle works and further for the Louvre Palace restoration work. He died in he died in 1857, leaving Violet Duc driving alone the works of Notre Dame. On the right, Eugène Violet Duc is, uh, was uh, seven years younger. Very soon, he was a remarkable drawer and analyst. In 1840, 1840, he was called by the Commission of Historic Monuments for the very careful restoration of Vesley. Further, he restored a number of medieval most important buildings and city walls are as Carcassonne, castle and palaces as, as Pierrefonds, churches, and so on. He published a very important dictionary of architecture between 1856 and 1868, which inspired a number of architects till now. He died in 
1879. In Notre Dame, work state started on 20 of April 1844. Restoration of the facade, abutment, and flying buttresses with extensive stone replacement using up to 20 different ones. Restoration of the central western doors of the gargoyles, finials, chimera, and pinnacles of the lead roof crest spire of the 25 meter high belfries in the north and south western towers of the inside giving back the aspect of the 12th century walls in few bays of the transept. Recreating the colored stained, glasses, stained glass windows thanks to the uh, Bourg Cathedral ones which were conserved. Well, restoration of the painted walls and of the 1403 organ and its 1730 case. These, war, these works were driven with a very deep harshness by de la Luc. The example of the spire is most in interesting. By carefully studying the 13th century vestige, he did use the original spire. Understanding the reason of the ruin of it, he projected structural reinforcement. And lastly, he observed that it was necessary to extend the spire by 13 meters high to be in the correct proportion with the cathedral. In fact, you can see he used three tools, historic, structural, and architect architectural analysis. He placed himself with the great discipline, greatest discipline and conventions as in the shoes of the 13th century architect. We must still bow to the conscience and mastery with which he was carried out, said a famous 20th century historian, Marcel Aubert. This is one of the most emblematic restoration of the 19th century and the birth of Department of Historic Monuments and a part of the history of restorations. 20th century, the hairs, the hairs. A permanent watch by the cathedral architects, <coughs> chief architects of historical monuments and archi architects of Bâtiment de France. A permanent watch <coughs> to look, to listen, to watch, to measure, to analyze, to understand, You can see the, the work of uh, flying buttresses. And uh, in the left, it is the first flying buttresses in the, in the choir with uh, the roof on the, on the, the, the ambulatory. And the middle, it is uh, the one with uh, the uh, central um, uh, arch of the six parted vaults. And the one on the right, is showing the equilibrium obtained by the new flying buttresses in the 13th century after uh, taking away the roof of the, of the, of the, of the terrace of the deambulatory. So this kind of, of analysis is very important because um, for a number of years it was said by historian that the flying buttresses were not necessary for the equilibrium of the cathedral. And they had a wrong lecture of the document. And this is a proof that it was necessary to have flying buttresses in the nave, in the choir, if not the vaults are climbing down. So this is 
the help of architectural analysis to um, historian and uh, documentary research and uh, both are leading to um, a, ma a, main, a main knowledge of the, of the architecture. The help of specialist archives and the help of laboratories, engineers, chemists, and so on. Searching, searching the answer. With a doctrinal and philosophical tool, you can uh, recognize John Ruskin, Eugène Viollet-le-Duc, Prosper Mérimée, Barton Camillo Boito, Alois Riegel. Searching the answer with uh, architectural tool, we can see some example with the uh, calculation of the, of the flying buttresses. Technical tools, traditional ones, as you can see the original tools of the construction of the cathedral as it is used for restoration, and modern ones, some of them in the forefront of research. You can see here how it can be, it was possible to save some very, very ill stones in the, some pinnacles of the, of the choir, thanks to a, a method which is called biomineralization. <coughs> After that scientific validation by Inspection Générale and National Commission in Historical Monuments, and then the works beginning on the, on the right, it is a, a fantastic photo from the works beginning, beginning of 12th century. Now we, can, we, we must do as you can see on the left. Concert, uh, you can see now, we, we, we have three regulation type of four uh, intervention, conservation, restoration, and security. This is our three type of, uh, of, of intervention in the since the 12th and 20th century. Conservation, some examples of 20th century conservation works. The spire were restored in 1935. 1939, war protections. 1968, 1970, washing the facade it is the first way to clean facade with water. 1988, general shake-up of the building, which leads to observe several decays and illness of stone. Stone decay, as you can see. On the left, you can see new stones, probably coming from the restoration of 19th century and the state of the others, probably more from the 12th or 13th century. <coughs> On the right, you can see uh, a stone between two, uh, two stained glasses. And uh, a great restoration, 1994 to 2000, to 2006, in the western facade was a very important work for changing, changing stones with modern tools. This is uh, changing and restoration of crest, for example, crockets, for example. As uh, you can see, sculpture, to copy some sculptures, statues, which are not in, in, in good situation enough to be conserved in the monument and uh, must be uh, put down and uh, in, uh, in, uh, in protected area and to be replaced. We gave, uh, we had, we, 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 we asked uh, sculptor to, 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 to give the work. Cleaning, strengthening, you can see there's a very gr big work that have been done on the, uh, on the Western portals uh, as uh, cleaning and restoring the, 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 the sculptures and the statues. The roof crests in, in lead, we achieved 
uh, beginning in 1960 by uh, West Nave, following in 1980 for the choir and uh, south arm of the transept and finishing in two, two, 2006 in uh, East Nave and North arm of the, of the transept. You can see some hurts and problems of conservation of the crest. And um, this is examples of uh, cons um, consolidation of the, of the carpentry, the 12th and 13th carpentry of the, of the nave, covering by lead and then by crest as uh, models of the original, ori original 19th century ones by, by modeling, by um, uh, mold modeling, yes. Inside decoration to be, to be cleaned. Some examples of uh, 12, 20th century restoration works. First example, the bells. They were about 10 in the, in the old times, destroyed during the revolution, except the Great Bourdon. It is now the plain by the cathedral <coughs> chapter to recreate the Anson Bell Ensemble for the uh, 850 anniversary of the cathedral. They were necessary to make studies upon the stability of the Violet Duc Belfries and to manage some repairs as to receive the nine new bells on them that have just been founded in the end of last year. And soon ready to ring. In the second example, Notre Dame played a truly pioneering role. The, you remember the colored stained glass windows created beginning of 13th century and removed in um, uh, 1753 were recreated by Violet Duc from ancient models, for example, Bourges Cathedral, notably distributed according to an increasing rich light from west to east. In 1937, seven young glass making painters wanted to remove the pale and gray glasses of the nave <coughs> and to offer modern style glasses. Began then a great discussion about the coming of modern art in an historical an iconic monument, and about the removing of Yolel Duc's works. It took about 30 years of hard arguing of several models, panels, and six sessions of the High Commission for Historic Monuments. And finally, in 1964, André Malraux then Minister of Cultural Affairs approved the final project respecting the balance and progression of light in si inside the cathedral. And works were completed in June 1965. At that time, the cathedral have opened its door to modern art and will never close. 1979, the new altar by Paul Touré. 2007, the new liturgical choir. 1994, the new Golden Cross by, by Marc Couturier. And now you must understand that about 13 million people a year is coming inside the cathedral, leading to security attention and most difficult works. 1997, 1995, sorry, Antisucid nets along the tower visiting tour were installed 
in 2011, fire-free equipments were put on, and 2013, <coughs> help for disabled. So now, how to conclude? <coughs> Gothic architecture was in the 12th and 13th century an enthusiastic creation. It was after, in the 19th century, a creative rebirth. And now a major example of structural rationalistic architecture that inspired modern architects as Auguste Perret. As you can see, the Church of Laurency, built in 1924, in concrete, very close to Gothic inspiration. <coughs> this architecture is given by giants who were young men. In 1160, Maurice de Sully, évêque, bishop, was 37 years. When he wrote Notre Dame de Paris, Victor Hugo were 31 years old. And Eugène Viollet-le-Duc, when he began the work in Notre Dame, he was 29 years. And Auguste Perret, when he built Laurency, he was 39. So, it is a movement of young men. And now, young mind in bodies of experiences. But the cathedral is still young, seductive, and may, uh, may I say rather sexy. <laughs> Thank you. about architecture or about uh, the survey? The survey, the amount of uh, people. You know, uh, <laughs> it is rather difficult question. Uh, of course, uh, Notre Dame is the first cathedral in France, and uh, by because of this, it is, it is uh, uh, very, very closely looked by the state. But it, it has not uh, a very special uh, uh, attention. It is, uh, for example, uh, nowadays uh, there are very, very heavy works uh, given to uh, Bourg Cathedral. Uh, uh, for many years, uh, Chartres Cathedral uh, had very uh, many expensive works for clean cleaning the inside. Uh, since uh, very many uh, years, uh, the stained glasses of Chartres uh, are in uh, restoration and so on and so on. So it depends of the of the shakeup of each cathedral. It depends of the uh, urgencies. It depends of uh, situations. But uh, uh, mostly uh, Notre Dame is uh, uh, the one which is the most sensi sensitive, sensible, sorry, sensible uh, for uh, for uh, the attention of the of the of the of the, uh, of the state. If there is a, a mistake, if there is a, a problem in Notre Dame, it will be a scandal. So you can understand that we, we must be very, very, very careful. I think I heard you say there were 13 million visitors a yes. year, which is uh, more than a million a month. Yes. I think the maximum number of visitors to an English cathedral is somewhere in the region of about a million per year. 
Mm -hmm. um, and that cathedral is very concerned about the amount of damage that that number of visitors do. So what do you do about 13 million visitors per year? Surely that's, I'm thinking about it, that's like a first division football match every day. Um, what happens about the, the hammer on the fabric? What happens what? The, 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 the damage, the uh, destruction of the fabric by the, by the visitors. You know, it, uh, it, it is, it is um, very surprising, uh, such a number of, uh, of visitors. There are visitors, tourists and, and so on, and there are people coming for the, for the, the, the offices. Um, it is, it is uh, surprising that there is no special damage because of this. Uh, they are all in the nave, few of them is, are in the, uh, visiting the, the, the ambulatory. But it is nowadays in good health, uh, there is no decay, uh, special decay from, the, from this important touristic, uh, touristic uh, and, uh, and visitors uh, coming. Probably the most difficult things are, for example, uh, you have, for example, a, 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 great, uh, a great assistance in uh, Notre Dame, and uh, probably there is a fire. What happens? So uh, we have to we have to be sure uh, we have uh, enough doors to open, such as people go away very, very, very quickly. Um, we have to manage something like an alert if the fire is uh, coming from the, from the roof, for example, or from another part. It is uh, rather difficult because if there is an office at that time, uh, we have uh, um, a survey about uh, alert uh, of fire, which is in the part of the, of, the, of the building, but we must have a man climbing very quickly to the, to the top of the, of the roof, such as in, uh, in less than 10 minutes to say, no, there is nothing, or yes, there is something, and, uh, and, and, and people must uh, climb the, raise the alert. So this is very difficult things. This is a fire, is, a, is a, an example, but you have so many problems. Because of the regulations of public uh, security, in those uh, uh, buildings. So sometimes those rules are against or fighting against the architectural uh, authenticity. And this is the most difficult uh, work to do, probably. How much initiative, how much pers personal initiative does the architect in charge of the work have of, at, at, with your cathedrals? And do you have a system, as we have, of advisory or monitoring bodies uh, which uh, can advise? So there is a watch from two, by two architects of uh, the state, uh, architect, chief architect of historical monuments, and architect the Bâtiment de France, who is uh, called the conservator of the cathedral. Um, they both have to survey, they both have to, to look after the cathedral. In the service of uh, architect the Bâtiment de France, there is one man who is uh, charged to survey every day, to go every day to look after the cathedral. In my office, we are two, I have two colleagues, um, full time roughly to survey the cathedral. Above of this, the state has um, uh, several men and women uh, which are in the, in the situation to organize uh, year after year the program of the works to choose and to uh, select the, uh, the workers and so on and so on and to collect. Uh, money from the state. So there is a number of people, not all in the same office, but a number of people 
which are uh, looking after the cathedral. And it is to say also that there is uh, the church, the, chap the chapter, and the church with many people living inside, quite in, in the side, but quite inside all day long. And uh, this, this, those people too have a, uh, to have an eye. So uh, this cathedral, it is not the same for every cathedral in France, sadly, but in this cathedral, there is a very many a permanent watch to the cathedral. And we, it, it, uh, any accident coming, it is known in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the hour. So to answer to your question. After that, we have um, to organize year after year. Uh, as we know roughly what is uh, the, the situation and the state of the, of the cathedral, we know that it is more, most urgent to go to the flying buttresses of the choir because there are decay of stones. We must go to the uh, roofs, as I uh, show you the crests of the, of the Lord roof, and so on and so on. So we have uh, uh, something like a, a sheet of urgency. And year after year, we, we make the studies, such as to uh, in investigate uh, a historical document, um, documentation, to make a survey uh, and to watch with uh, several uh, um, uh, tools, and, and so on and so on, and to prepare the work to be done one year, two years, three years after. So this is um, a permanent <coughs> going uh, year after year from studies to works, which are organized for about 10 years long. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, you, you have installed some modern glass, um, and I wondered, we have so many heritage foundations and such like in England where they don't let you change anything. Um, and I wondered, how far were you allowed to do that, and what happened to what you took out? Um. The second question I can't repair, re re answer because I don't know where oh, I, they, they were gone. But they were, you know, not very deeply colored uh, stainless uh, stain glasses, but uh, they were rather interesting. Um, this is a, a great question because, um, in one hand, you are people saying a cathedral like that it is iconic, iconic not to be changed any stone and not to be changed any, anything. But uh, you know that uh, these buildings to, to, to be conserved need to be restored. So we must uh, change stones, we must change woods and, uh, and, and so on, and beams and so on. So it is necessary to change some parts of authenticity as possible as, uh, as the same as they, as they were. But um, in the other hand, you have people, for example, the church, who says that the cathedral is a tool for the church. That is to say, is something uh, still alive in the modern society and not something like in the museum. So they ask to get this building quite alive as a modern use for, for a religion and, and so on and so on. And you have people saying they are, they are right. And you, and you can see, for example, the building of the, of the church from the 12th to the 13th century changed. And this church began to be modern at that time, so why to stop? And this is the other uh, kind of, uh, of debate, you know, we have. Um, rather difficult, because we, we must define the, 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 the middle of, uh, of the road, uh, not to, <laughs> to uh, on the left, not too much in the right. And this is uh, a question of uh, very many debates with uh, associations and with 
other people. <coughs> and not only for cathedral, it is, it is uh, the, the, the daily debates uh, for, for any monument. I've got two simple questions. One is, the cathedral was, so the, 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 the Notre Dame was cleaned in the 1960s. Has it been cleaned since? And the second question is, is the cleaning done for aesthetic reasons or for <laughs> reasons of conservation? <coughs> the first uh, cleaning was in 1968. And uh, it was from uh, André Malraux, who was uh, Ministry of Culture at that time. And it was rather a polit political project, such as to show that we do something for monuments and so on. We must say that uh, Notre Dame was rather, rather dark, was a, rather, rather black, and uh, it was a, a great pleasure to discover the architecture. So it was probably political, but it was very good for monuments because uh, anybody can, could discover at that time that uh, historical monuments were, were rather, rather nice, rather interesting, and discovering all the richness of this kind of architecture. So after that, many campaigns followed cleaning buildings, cleaning monuments. Um, Nowadays, uh, the second reason is a reason of conservation. Because the blackness of the walls are from something like dust, but something like salt in the air, and salt combining with the stone is uh, accelerating the decay of it. Going inside, and from the winter to the summer and back to the winter, there were so, so many changes of climate that there is a uh, respiration of the stone and uh, the skin of the stone began to, to, to decay in several parts. So it, it appeared very clearly that it was necessary to take off the dust and the, the salt too, such as to give the stone a, be a better health, you know. So I, I'm, I trust that it is for arch architecture very, very interesting to discover it, but it is necessary to get this architecture cleaned, um, sorry, salt proof, um, and because of the climate, because of uh, pollution, it could be necessary to clean uh, each uh, 13. 30 years, each 50 years. For example, the Museum of Orsay, who opened uh, in 1980, we had to, to, to clean it uh, 20 years after. When we built the scaffoldings on the facade, they were um, a, a, a white net to protect uh, people uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the ground. Few months after the beginning of the work in the Musée d'Orsay, in the in the Seine side, in the River Seine side, the net began grey. Several months after, and the year after, they were rather black. So you can understand how how quick, how fast is the dust coming on the walls, and with the dust, the the salt, uh, very dangerous for the conservation. Every building is not in the same situation. For example, uh, several uh, buildings in, in the countryside uh, need to be cleaned probably once to a century or to, to two centuries, for example. It depends, really. But it needs to be, to be looked after. Um, I can ask the question in English or, or French. I don't know. As you like. I'll, I'll do it in English first. Um, I want to ask you more about the, the teaching in architecture. 
And what is for you the most important thing to teach to the students at the Cité de la Architecture? Um, you have how many time? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to ask you this because it's a very different school here and I would like to hear um, what you could. I think that um, <coughs> the architect must be uh, clever, rather, rather clever in, uh, in building. That is to see materials, uh, where they put together and so on and so on. He must uh, be in form of old ways of building and new ways. So I think the architect is uh, first a uh, uh, um, technician or something like that. But the difference between an architect and a builder is something else. That is to say that the architects have to understand what is space, what is light, what is um, a sensitive impression from architecture to people and how to answer to functional programs such as to share them but to add something more like something like a spirit or something like most important that just I answer the, 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 the question. <coughs> I think that um, we can understand this when we study ancient architecture because the lesson of architecture. Victor Hugo said the, the book of architecture is a book of the man. Uh, I don't remember exactly for spirit and for, strong, for his spirit and for his strongness. Um, when you, when you enter into old architecture, you can see very, very many examples of the way people used to answer to a question, giving something more interesting than only the answer. And uh, um, um, examples after examples, uh, centuries after centuries, you have something like a, like a chain showing how experiences of old times are <coughs> enlarged, increased by the generation following, and so on and so on and so on. And you can understand that you are not alone in an island. You are from a very, very long chain that gives you something in your experience, in your memory, even if you can't understand it. If you, even if you can't think um, uh, th that you have something in your mind. It is your, um, how would you say, um, heritage. Heritage, uh, as heritage, sorry. <laughs> in French, heritage, heritage. Um, it is, uh, I think, the door for modern architecture. There is a, another novelist in France whose name was Diderot. He said, no imagination without memory. I think it is the best, uh, the best um, summary of the question. So uh, by myself, I'm, I enjoy very much uh, teaching. And I think that uh, the, the, the school of architecture must very, very um, quick uh, climb into history chain of building and uh, results of architecture. And at the end of this, as you can, as you are a builder, as you are something most than a builder uh, uh, because of the spirit you, you, you put on, on, your, on, your, on your work, you can think architecture and you can create architecture in the line, the red line you are coming from. Yeah, I wonder, uh, could you tell us something about uh, funding and sources of, of revenue? Uh, English cathedrals don't receive any official uh, funding from, from the state. Uh, are you in the uh, fortunate position uh, at Notre Dame to, to actually receive anything like this? 
uh, we are not in the same position because in France, cathedrals belong to the state. So the state has to collect money in his uh, own pocket. It is possible for the state to, to get some, uh, some, uh, some gifts from, uh, from people. Uh, for example, for, from a city, it was the example of uh, Orléans. From a uh, department, it was another example. From uh, people like you on, or, 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 or me, which want to give something to the, to the world. But there are very few. And for the most uh, majority of examples, the state have to pay the works of the conservation of the cathedral of his own uh, property. It is rather expensive. But it is a political wish. It, it is a political um, um, necessity, I think. Sorry, that's very quick. Um, the uh, admission charges and, and things like that, does that go to the actual building itself or does it, does it go to the state? And the <laughs> or do we not have that at all? The 13 million visitors in Notre Dame, 13 million a, a year, come free inside of the cathedral. That's it. <laughs> Do we have a, a final question from anybody? No? Well, can I, on uh, all our behalf, thank uh, Bonjour for uh, not only a fascinating talk, but for some of the um, most entertaining and uh, delightful slides and illustrations that I've seen for, for ages. And um, we are extremely grateful for. Thank you. Thank you.